Hi everyone. My name is Sitaram. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, open Wi-Fi today. Uh, some of you might have heard of open Wi-Fi. Uh, so Wi-Fi is actually not new to open source. Uh, there are lots of open source projects in Wi-Fi, OpenWRT, there is host APD, WPS applicant, um, free radius. There are many areas, technologies that have been uh, uh, available that uh, Wi-Fi access point manufacturers have used extensively uh, in their access points for many years. But uh, open Wi-Fi really takes it to the next level uh, when it comes to open sourcing Wi-Fi technology. So what Open Wi-Fi has done is uh, created a community project uh, that can open source access point firmware and also provide a cloud controller SDK. Uh, that's all open source. So anyone who is a member of uh, Open Wi-Fi uh, can actually pretty much get access point firmware and cloud controller software for free. And then you can build solutions uh, on top of it uh, for uh, your specific use cases. So there are a number of uh, Open Wi-Fi community members uh, that are part of Open Wi-Fi that are actually making use of all this uh, development work uh, that is done by the community. And of course, there are white box access points that are Open Wi-Fi compliant uh, and certified uh, that uh, uh, can be used for, uh, for, for these deployments. So some of the advantages of Open Wi-Fi is that it is a community-driven driven project. And uh, one of the really cool things, it's, it's uh, a fully disaggregated uh, stack. What that means is you can take white box hardware and you can a, diff, a different uh, uh, vendor can take their uh, access point software firmware, a different vendor can load their controller uh, so software. You can take a controller uh, dashboard and you can manage many access points from many different vendors. And it's all disaggregated, right? And it's available for uh, free for uh, the community. Another really cool part of what Open Wi-Fi did uh, as a company that makes test equipment, uh, we love this, is uh, they have really thought through the testing part. Because any open source project which is community driven uh, could have lots of bugs. We all know that even in closed projects, we, we have lots of issues and lots of bugs. But this is a community driven project and the code is being contributed by many uh, members of the community and there could be lots of issues. So from day one, Open Wi-Fi has created a commercial grade automated uh, testing infrastructure that is also available for free for all the community members. So not only are you getting access point software, controller software, and all of that, but you're getting an entire test infrastructure uh, that you can leverage uh, if you're part of the open Wi-Fi community, right? And all different kinds of test plans. Most of uh, you uh, companies, the companies that make access points, you all know how much work it is to create all these test plans and create automation, create end-to-end -end test automation frameworks and all of that. The open Wi-Fi community has done all of that and has open sourced all of it, right? Uh, for people to, people to use. So my talk is mostly going to be focused on the testing aspect of open Wi-Fi. I'm not going to cover a lot of the technology side, but I'm going to show the various things that we are doing in the community for uh, making sure uh, we are creating uh, excellent, high quality uh, products. So uh, again, for those of you who don't know, um, open Wi-Fi is not just for residential. It has a whole wide range of applications. It goes from residential to small, medium business to small enterprises, uh, multi-dweller units, SMBs, uh, large enterprises, large public venues. It covers all these market verticals and all these use cases, which means that the features that are being implemented uh, cover all these particular areas, both residential and enterprise class. Again, you can go to the website and see uh, all the details of all the features that are being, uh, being rolled out as a part of this project by the community. And same with the Cloud SDK. Uh, the Cloud SDK is available uh, and also has a wide variety of features that you would see in most enterprise class um, access points and uh, cloud controller software these days are all made uh, available in open Wi-Fi. Uh, all the way, there is uh, partnerships with open roaming. There's a number of other things that are being happening in uh, the open Wi-Fi uh, uh, community right now. So this is an example of uh, the current state of the cloud controller software. And uh, that does not mean that it has to be like this. This is basically the base software that is available. Uh, for free, and uh, uh, community members can take this and build on top of it and create their own version of, of this thing. But the software right now, you can see that uh, uh, this is one of our actual deployments that we have, and you can see there are APs from so many different vendors, uh, all managed by the same controller from various uh, different access point manufacturers are all there. And it has most of the normal features that you would see in a cloud controller, how to uh, check for clients, users, uh, set policies, rules, upgrade firmwares, control the access points, uh, push uh, policy control to the access points and all of that has wide variety of uh, uh, features are already implemented that are av again available for uh, the community members. 
So that's a little bit about open Wi-Fi for those who have not uh, seen it before. Uh, now I'm going to talk about what we are doing from a testing point of view. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a big problem because there are different community members uh, contributing code and uh, there are so many different access point manufacturers participating in this thing. Uh, and so testing is a big challenge. And uh, it's not done in a closed way, it's done in a very open way. And so what we have done to make sure we do the testing really well is we started with a, a, um, a very nice community lab that was built uh, in California. Uh, so for those of you who have seen this, uh, uh, there is a nice open Wi-Fi lab in California. It has most, a lot of test equipment. All the equipment that you see here is from, uh, from Candela. And we have built so many different test beds, right? All the way from basic access point performance test beds to uh, advanced uh, performance test beds to 6C test beds, interoperability test beds, mesh test beds, uh, test beds for MDU scenarios, large public venue testing. Uh, there's so many uh, different kinds of use cases that are uh, part of these uh, test beds. We have plus 20 plus test beds in a huge lab in California that is available for the community members. Uh, so anyone who is a member of the community would send their APs to this lab. They would reserve time in the test bed uh, system and then we can actually schedule the time and run these tests and, uh, and collect all the, all the results. Again, uh, there could be a, someone making a residential AP. So certain part of this lab will be useful for that. Someone could be making an uh, enterprise class AP. Someone could be do doing residential mesh. It does not matter. We are covering all uh, different kinds of uh, use cases. So, Starting with a, a state-of-the-art, really powerful test lab that has all the really modern test equipment, right? Uh, on top of it, what we have done here is uh, we have created this entire automation framework, right? Which is, again, remember that this is open source. It takes years to build these automation frameworks if you're doing it uh, within a closed organization. And we built this uh, entire framework and completely open sourced it, right? So, if you look at this framework, it will, uh, what it will do is it will actually go to the code repository uh, where you actually, all the new firmware images are available. Uh, it will find the firmware images, upgrade the, uh, the access points. Basically, it, there is full integration with all engineering tools and all uh, build systems, right? And all the access points that are available are upgraded uh, and then the test plans are selected based on which AP you're testing, what model you're testing. The test beds are reserved. Remember, there are so many different test beds, so you have to do test bed reservation. And then uh, the test plans are loaded. Uh, the access points are configured. The automation will automate the access point also. Uh, and, uh, and then you'll run many different types of tests. So there are sanity test plans, regression test plans, soak test plan. Um, many, many different types of automated test plans are all available. And then all the results are collected. The KPIs are all measured. All the results are pushed to a dashboard. And then uh, if, if you can do comparison results between different firmware images, AP models, uh, different releases, and so on. You can do all those things within the, the dashboard. The framework itself, uh, we are in the process of automating uh, almost 10,000 test cases for, uh, for Wi-Fi testing. Uh, we, right now, we have about 3,000 or 4,000 test cases automated. Uh, and they cover all these areas. So from basic command and control. So something as simple as, can I successfully upgrade and downgrade my access points firmware? Right? Uh, are all my LEDs lighting up? Are all my physical interfaces working? Ethernet interfaces, wireless interfaces? Are all the virtual interfaces working? Are all the bridge, bridge mode, VLAN mode, NAT mode, all these modes working on the access point? So all the APIs, um, those, are those working? So all those things, initial basic things. And then we go to functional testing. Functional testing includes all the functionality, security, BSS capabilities, radio resource management, smart Wi-Fi features, uh, QoS, mobility, power save. All these areas are tested and there are test cases for uh, all the functional aspects of, uh, of uh, the access points and the controller, uh, controller. And then we come to the very important aspect of performance testing. So again, we have hundreds and hundreds of test cases that cover various aspects of performance, uh, benchmarking throughput with various packet sizes, MIMO types, channel bandwidths, uh, channels, uh, and so on. Uh, Multi-band performance, what if you have a tri-band AP and if you're loading all the bands at the same time, uh, and there are some shared system resources on the access point. So how are they able to keep, uh, when you load all the interfaces on the API, all the radios on the API at the same time, how is your performance getting affected? Uh, mobility performance, uh, uh, transmitter quality, receiver quality, uh, application, YouTube streaming, video, voice quality. Uh, we are doing this testing both with virtual devices, uh, so Candela equipment can actually create lots and lots of virtual stations um, and scale, uh, but we are also adding this uh, real devices in the mix. And we are auto also automating testing with uh, the latest iPhones, Samsung phones, and so on. And then it comes to stress and endurance, which is also a very important aspect, uh, MTBF and running long duration stress tests. 
Uh, we run tests like uh, create hundreds of wireless clients, connect them to the access points, disconnect them at various times, start traffic, stop traffic, and run this test for one week, 14 days, and so on. And we are also logging into the AP in real time and measuring vital stats. We are looking at CPU utilization, memory utilization, uh, any um, memory leaks or any, uh, any crashes on the AP, any events that we see. We are logging all those things and providing that information as a part of the testing. Creating different load patterns, running different types of load patterns and testing uh, for performance. And then there is use case testing, um, like running different use cases, like if it's a mesh environment, if it's a single API environment, if it's a large public venue environment, uh, and so if it's a campus network. So trying to recreate all these uh, uh, scenarios in the lab uh, and doing testing. All these test cases are covered as a part of the automation framework. So now we have a framework that automates all your engineering tools, build systems, and your results and dashboards, plus runs all these test cases on your system, on all these test beds. Uh, and it's all open source, right? So this is the, this is the use that the open Wi-Fi community is, is going to get from, uh, from this framework that we're building. So this is more uh, pictures of more test beds that we have. Um, these are all, again, this is a large public venue test bed. It has, uh, it represents like an entire, uh, you can think of it as a shopping mall or something like that. It's all in one, one setup with, uh, put together with lots of chambers and so on. So now, um, okay, so now we have all these tests and test beds and we can run this, but we also need some very good engineering tools that we are all used to, like uh, Confluence, Jira, uh, all these tools that we have, and uh, we also do this. So in this project, again, as a part of the open source work we are doing, every release is tracked, we are doing sprints, uh, every sprint has new features that are developed, all the features are entered into the system, based on the features, uh, the, 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 uh, those who are developing these test plans, we develop all the test plans, we are, add all the test cases, all these uh, are written in Jira stories, uh, and you can see every release has all these features that we're testing, how many test cases, how many are running, and all these are tracked across all release cycles, and it's all available for the community to, to look at. And we can see that we are running all these tests, finding bugs, all the features. You can see the AP models, all these AP models are being tested from various companies, TP-Link, Indio, Edgecore, uh, various AP models. They're all part of the open web community, and we are testing all their APs. And very low level results, throughput numbers, rate versus range, antenna orientation, uh, all the bugs we filed, all the stories. It's all part of the community project. So you can think of it as we are actually running a full R&D, including testing, uh, but as a part of the open source community. And it is no less sophisticated than uh, any of the other uh, closed projects that, uh, that you might come across. Right, so also from the result tracking, we use uh, uh, really nice ways of tracking results. Uh, it's all on a dashboard, it's all available online. Actually, this is, you can all go look at it, I can send you the links. And it's actually uh, uh, tracking how many test cases were run for each AP model, how many passed, how many failed. Uh, and you can also look at detailed logs also. So the results go from very high level to very detailed. In fact, you, if you, there is a particular test case that is failing, you can actually go to the AP logs because the test uh, framework uh, actually logs into the AP and downloads the logs from there and actually uh, uploads it into this, into this framework. So you can actually go look at individual uh, low level AP level commands as well, and it's quite sophisticated the way uh, the reporting is done. So this is our own version of our uh, open Wi-Fi uh, lab in our office in India. So we have our own version. So we do all these testing. Uh, this is uh, a short video from our office here in India. And uh, we have a mini version of the open Wi-Fi lab. Uh, it's not as ex extensive as uh, the lab in California, but uh, uh, most of our engineers work from here and they manage the entire lab uh, that's there. Uh, but sometimes we cannot uh, get access to the lab because of we need to do something, so we have our own version of the lab here. And again, any access point manufacturers who are interested in uh, engaging with us and you're part of Open Wi-Fi, you want to work with us, uh, we can certainly, you can come work with us. We have equipment, we have everything here as well. Right. Okay, that's all great. So you're testing so extensively in the lab. There is so much work going on. We're talking about 10,000 test cases. We're talking about all these other things. But what does it really mean for a deployment, right? So as a test equipment uh, company, I know that uh, during early stage R&D, there are a lot of issues with any product, any access point, any product we're building. And so there, are, there is a need for very deterministic, uh, very automatable testing so that because you need a lot of test coverage. You need to be able to 
cover every feature very quickly because you know your product has a lot of issues, right? But once you have gone through that phase of uh, development in, uh, in the early stages of development, now you're closer to the deployment, right? So you've most likely found 70, 80% of the problems and fixed them through the process that I just showed you using automation, using all these other things. But it is guaranteed that the most important bugs will escape and they will go to the field, right? So the, the remaining 20% of the issues will most likely be only found in the field. And there is this question, and I, when I talk to a lot of uh, our customers who are looking at open Wi-Fi, uh, they're all observing it, but they're not really sure if it is really ready for prime time. I mean, is it, is it really ready? Should we wait a little longer and then start using it? So then I, I got curious about this and said, okay, we are doing all this testing in this lab, uh, but uh, what if we do a real deployment, right? And let's see what happens, uh, how well this product stands up when we're doing in a real deployment, a real test network that we create, right? And so we set out to do this um, real test network. So we got, uh, again, this is a picture from our office. Uh, we received 100 uh, open Wi-Fi access points. They're all stacked nicely <laughs> there. And we installed these access points in a real enterprise. In a, the best enterprise that I could find where there are a lot of very enthusiastic uh, people who are very interested in participating is a college campus. Right? There is nothing better than that. So a lot of very enthusiastic students who want to participate. Right? So we actually went and deployed these uh, APs, uh, running open Wi-Fi in three different uh, uh, colleges. Uh, each college is of different size. Some of them have 1,500 plus students, eight acre campus. Some of them are a little bit smaller. Uh, and then we went and took a section of each college and we deployed uh, an open Wi-Fi network. Right? So we call this project uh, VCAN, or Wireless Education Campus Area Network. So we came up with this VCAN uh, project idea. And then we started engaging with the local colleges and started building these, uh, these networks. So what did we do here? This is one example. So in this college called Gayatri Vidya Parishad, uh, we set up this network. Uh, we took uh, the engineering building and one floor of the engineering building, about 30,000 square feet. And we installed uh, about 20 APs to cover about 30,000 square feet. And then uh, this is basically their uh, engineering building, uh, uh, ECE and CSE building. And uh, uh, in that floor, anytime you can have up to 1,000 students because it's a huge, uh, there are lots and lots of classrooms, 20, 30 classrooms there. So all the students actually install the networks. We didn't have anyone, any professional installers or anyone. The students are actually the one who actually ran all the Ethernet cable, uh, did all the crimping, connected all these things, uh, mounted the APs. These are actually, this is a third year student. He's mounting the AP on the, on the ceiling. These are all open Wi-Fi APs. The students are installing all the firmware, the certs, setting up the network, routing, DHCP, everything that takes to create enterprise network was all done in less, less than a week by these students. These are super enthusiastic kids. They have no knowledge of networking in the past, right? But they still did it. And then we ran this uh, test uh, with about 400 students. So what we did is we invited all the students to come in the, on this floor. And you can see so many students here, that we are telling them how to connect to the Wi-Fi network. They're all connecting to the, to the Wi-Fi network here. Uh, we fill, fill the floor with students, basically. And the good thing is all the students have phones, right? So they bring their own phones. And so we had no investment, really. We set up the network, we got the APs, we set up the network, and uh, this is the uh, open Wi-Fi controller. You can see about 400 devices were controlled, uh, were connected on the controller. Uh, and then we started doing uh, video streaming. So we asked all 400 students at the same time start streaming video right, on the network. And they're all streaming uh, uh, YouTube video. And then we asked them to write down, see, they have a pen and a paper. So they were, we are asking them to write down how many times you saw the video stall, how many times you saw buffering, uh, and all these things. Uh, they started uh, writing those things. We ran speed test. We measured uh, what kind of speeds they're getting on the network. You can see about 30 Mbps with 400 devices running in parallel. right? And these are all phones of different types. It's very interesting because when we did the analysis and survey, there were 400 phones and about 100 different variants, models, within these 400 phones. They're all different. Every phone is different. So after we ran the test, we did a quick online survey. You can just, there's an app where you can send a list of questions. You put a QR code. All the students scan the QR code. The survey comes up. They fill in the details, uh, what type of device they have, uh, what kind of uh, YouTube performance they got, what was their... Uh, um, uh, per, per, uh, speed test results and all of that. And all, all the results will come automatically to our, uh, in an Excel sheet, automatically it gets populated. And within three hours, we finished the whole thing. I thought it will take us two or three days to do this testing. We started at around 10 a.m. And by one, one o'clock, we are done because we had a whole bunch of very hungry students. They wanted to leave. 
So uh, by three hours, we finished the whole testing. We got all the results. Uh, so you see, these are all the different types of uh, about 400 phones and a, uh, close to 100 variants. These are all the phones that these students had. Um, many, many different uh, Asian brands um, that, that we commonly use, right? Uh, so what about the results? We saw that about 90% of the devices, of the 400 devices, connected in less than 10 seconds, 10 seconds or less, to the Wi-Fi network. Uh, I would say that's pretty, pretty good, uh, given the fact that they have to find the network, they have to connect to it and all of that. And about 99% of the devices had more than 4 Mbps or better download speeds when we ran the speed test simultaneously. Uh, more than 50% of devices had less than one buffer uh, on YouTube. So basically, that's the initial buffering you get when you actually start to playing a YouTube video. And after that, they didn't have any, any buffering at all, uh, more than 50% of the devices. And the remaining 50% probably had one or two uh, buffers here and there. So, uh, so these are some of the test results that we got. And the, what this shows is that uh, open Wi-Fi is, in fact, works, and it's ready. We, and this is no better way to test this than college campuses with so many different types of students doing all these, uh, all these interesting yeah, things. Sure. So in, in to, to summarize, uh, what we are doing is we are doing extensive testing in the lab, uh, thousands of test cases automated, fully automated automation frameworks, uh, dashboards of results, all kinds of historical data. Uh, and then we're also doing very interesting things like uh, testing real campuses. All these networks are actually active right now, and we are continuing to test. So anytime uh, the, the community releases a new feature, uh, there is a new feature called uh, new feature in RRM recently that they released. We are now upgrading these APs in, uh, on the real network, and we are asking the students to come back and test it. Right? So we are managing both the lab testing and the, and the field testing. So uh, this is more information about That's my phone number. You can connect me with the link on LinkedIn if you have more questions. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hi, uh, very nice talk. So um, I had two questions. So you talked about that the APs are getting control. So is it uh, an HDN controller sort of thing? Or uh, how is the controller uh, uh, architecture for uh, controlling these APs? Uh, the controller software, uh, so you are, are you saying it's an SDN? I'm asking, is it yes, an Yes, yes. So, so basically, it's a cloud just like any other cloud controller would work. Okay. You would install it in the cloud, and you can actually connect to the APs and provision the APs to the cloud, just like any other cloud controller that I works. See. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you also talked about Wi-Fi 6-based APs. So what all configuration does it allow to have, uh, uh, like, just like what other cloud controllers allow? It's just that it is open Wi-Fi. Is that so? Uh, so open Wi-Fi feature set, again, you can go to the website and look at all the features that are implemented. Every new sprint, there are new features implemented. There is support for Wi-Fi 6, new support for Wi-Fi 6E also coming. Uh, so all those features that are standard features that you would see in uh, traditional access points are all there in open Wi-Fi as well. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hi. Uh, yeah, thank you for the good presentation. Uh, what is the cost, like you mentioned about testing in your lab, or even uh, becoming a member of uh, the Open Wi-Fi. Is there a cost associated with becoming a member or running the test? Like, what? Uh, Good question. Uh, there is a membership fee, I think. It's probably quite minimal. I don't know exactly what the number is. Uh, for becoming a member of Open Wi-Fi, as a company, uh, you can become a member. Uh, as far as the testing goes, uh, since it's early stages, um, uh, the, the community lab uh, uh, members are sending access points that are being tested. But eventually, my understanding, and I'm not part of the open Wi-Fi um, organization leadership or anything, so I don't know all the uh, uh, things that they are planning to do. But my understanding is that there is going to be a, a, a program where you can reserve the test lab for a cost uh, and use the lab, because all the infrastructure is already there. You don't have to do it. Um, and that's, that's, that's the, for now, it is not very organized. So. Anybody else? Uh, I have a question. So when you had those results uh, with some uh, connectivity time, etc., uh, does that come from a particular hardware set? Because TIP is also aiming to involve, uh, you know, different hardware companies, which then have some standards for exposing the data for cloud control, etc. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there can be hardware differences at a wireless level, and so you do expect that some people might do better on some fronts, maybe slightly bad. So is there a plan? Two questions is one, uh, have you seen differences in performance across similar APs? Mm -hmm. And the other question is, do you plan to have a certification program where you say, if you want a tip brand on your product, 
you need to have these ba baseline benchmark right, numbers. Right, right. Absolutely. And at the hardware, we have seen differences in performance on hardware. Um, my understanding is that uh, there is a basic, basic requirement, like you need to have so much CPU memory, you need to be running these kind of system resources and all of that. So, uh, and there is also going to be a certification program for the hardware itself. Uh, my understanding is that there's also going to be some form of badging program similar to Wi-Fi lines ba badging and all of that. Uh, that's all prob uh, is probably in the plan. Right okay, now. great. So uh, if there are no more questions. I think we should give you a big hand for involving so many college students in <laughs> such an activity. So really wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.